Hey everyone, welcome, it's Caleb. In this video, we're going to learn how to set up a Kubernetes cluster using Linode and connect to it from our computer. So if you wanna get started, go to linode.com slash Caleb Curry, and you should be able to sign up and get some free cloud credit to get started. Now, when you get into the dashboard, you're not gonna have all the same stuff as me as I've been working with Linode already. However, you can go up to create and hit Kubernetes. So from here, we can create a new cluster. We can give this cluster a name. I'm just gonna go with LKE for Linode Kubernetes engine. Now for the region, you can use the speed test page to figure out the best region for you. I'm just gonna go with Dallas, Texas here and choose the latest Kubernetes version. Now you can decide which of these to use. If you're just starting out with a very simple app, then a shared CPU is probably fine. You can go with the Linode two gigabyte or four gigabyte. But if you need something a little bit more serious, you can start working your way up here or go to the dedicated CPU and this is for a little bit more hefty applications. Now, the third option on here is high memory. So this is for something such as in-memory databases, which you may also hear as IMDB, not to be confused with the internet movie database, which is what I know IMDB for. But anyways, we're going to stick with shared CPU and I'm just going to go with the Linode four gigabyte. I'm gonna go for three of them and you can hit add and it's gonna give you a cluster summary over here of what it's gonna cost each month. So let's go ahead and create this cluster. All right, so it finished, but we still gotta give it some time to fully set up. Once it's done, you should be able to get this cube config. You'll see that in just a moment. All right, there we go, it just appeared. This is the .yaml file I was talking about in the previous video. We're going to use this to connect to our cluster. So go ahead and hit download. That's going to appear on your computer. That's how downloading things works. Now we've done everything we need on the Linode end. Now we have to work on our computer, the client side, on how to actually connect to Linode. This is a little bit more of a process and it's going to depend on what operating system you're on. I myself am on Mac. However, if you're on Windows or Linux, you can follow this guide here, deploy and manage a cluster with Linode Kubernetes engine. There's a bunch of junk in here on how to actually do this for Linux as well as Windows if you need but we're going with Mac OS. We're gonna use Homebrew. If you've never used Homebrew, it's just a package manager for Mac. It makes it really easy to install things. We're gonna use this, so we're going to need to copy this if you don't have Homebrew. Open a terminal and paste that in. That will install Homebrew, and then you can easily install Kubernetes client on your computer. Once you got Brew installed, you can just say brew install Kubernetes hyphen CLI, command line interface. This is the Cubectal tool I was talking about in the previous video. Give it about three days to run all of its stuff and I get an error because I already have it installed, but if you've never used Kubernetes, then it'll probably install and everything should be good to go. So now you should be able to say Cubectl. All right, so you typed in Cubectl and you get a bunch of stuff as a response. That means it's installed. So now you can start issuing commands. So the very first one I wanna show you is get notes. So when you hit enter, it's going to say, the server doesn't have a resource type nodes. So basically we launched a Kubernetes cluster inside of Linode. We set up three Linode servers, and now we want these to appear right here. But in order for that to work, we actually have to connect Kubectl to the server. And that's where that .yaml file comes in. Now by default, Kubernetes is going to look for that .yaml file in a specific spot. So what we can do is we can take that YAML file and move it to that spot, and then it'll just automatically work. So where does it automatically look? Well, it's actually going to be in the home directory and then in a hidden folder dot cube, and then the file is going to be named config. So what we can do is copy or move that YAML file we downloaded to this spot. So we'll just do copy, and it is going to be located in the downloads folder and it was called lke.yaml. LKE was the name of our cluster, and then it's a .yaml file. If you just wanna be sure, or you can actually, you know, hit tab and it'll help type it out. So looks like I got a couple different YAML files here. So we're just going to go with LKE cubeconfig.yaml. You're not gonna have these other ones here. That's just for my other experiments. So you will have LKE cubeconfig.yaml and we're basically gonna copy it from the downloads folder to the config file that Kubernetes is going to look for by default. So when we hit enter, 
assuming we typed it all out right, we should be able to see that file in the cube folder. So we can do ls a and expose that folder real quick, like so. And you can see we have this config file. So that is our cube config. We just renamed it to just config. And that's what Kubernetes looks for by default. So now, after we got all that set up, we should be able to see our nodes. And I'm just going to clear the screen just to get it a little cleaner here. And now we say kubectl get nodes. And boom, there you go. Those are the three nodes of our cluster. Now Kubernetes has a concept of a pod, which is sort of like a container, but it's an extra layer around a container or multiple containers. So you can see all of your pods in your cluster with another command. So we can say kubectl get pods hyphen a to get all the pods across all the namespaces. And you'll understand that more, but basically there's a concept known as namespaces inside of Kubernetes. By default, they're all in the cube system namespace. So as you get more into Kubernetes, you can learn what all of this stuff is. But for now, I just wanted to show you that command. These are our different pods of our cluster. Here's a visual from the Kubernetes documentation, just so you can get a better understanding of pods. Also wanted to call out this interactive tutorial, which is a nice way to get more practice with Kubernetes. You can also see all the possible namespaces by saying kubectl get namespaces which it helps if you spell it right, namespaces, and there you go. So cube system are all of the pods created as part of the Kubernetes system. Here is a description of what all of the different possibilities are if you want more information. Up next, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about context as well as the YAML file, just some different things we can do with it. And we're also going to talk about Docker and how to use that to create an application. So stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next one. And be sure to subscribe.